There is a new sport gaining popularity, and it doesn't involve a field, a court, or even a ball. Nope. In this sport, gamers bang away at their keyboards, competing against other players in a virtual sphere. This is the world of esports and pro video gaming. And Denver 7th Russell Haythorne is going 360 on a phenomenon that's attracting a new kind of athlete and begging the question, are they nerds, jocks, or something entirely different? Next one, you're going to do a wide lunge with a curl. So you can press up. When you think of an athlete. And press up. Is this what comes to mind? Four. Or do you think of something I'm like this? literally getting chased by like three people. If you aren't already aware, competitive gaming, or what's known as eSports, is a booming phenomenon. As your Overwatch League champion. Crowning its first ever eSports world champion, the London Spitfire, just a few months ago. And a growing number of universities are even offering scholarships to competitive gamers. It's really becoming more of a mainstream activity, especially among millennials and those younger than me, like Gen Z. So let's press play on this eSports 360. To begin, we lock and load with the gamers themselves. My go-to game right now is probably Rocket League, and my handle in there is Rainbow Raccoon. Christian Antone is a computer science major at DU with a triple minor in math history and public policy. I may be a zillennial. A smart guy who argues his fellow keyboard warriors are without question athletes. The definition of what is a sport and what is in a sport can be rather fluid. What you can argue with is it's a task that you can improve with over time. At DU and up at CSU, there are now both casual and competitive esports clubs. It really should be considered a sport. Clubs complete with team captains for different games and skill levels. With every incoming freshman or um, first year class, We've grown, we've doubled, we've tripled. And they socialize together. They'll play a game together and they'll stand up and go talk to each other in person. Oh, you're this person, you're that person. Oh, it's great to meet you. It is certainly big business, inspiring new gaming centers like this one in Lakewood. It's big enough to be called an arena. We have one in Philadelphia, one uh, here in Denver. James Love is the director of communications for Nerd Street Gamers. I like to call it the biggest industry that nobody has heard of. He says these controller commandos exhibit uncanny reflexes and more. It also takes a lot of focus. It takes breathing. So a lot of the training that goes into traditional sports translates to the training that esports athletes go through. Okay, just a little deeper at the bottom. At one of Denver's premier one-on-one -on -one training facilities, the body shaping company. And on each side. Trainer Brianna Phillips appreciates the intensity of gaming. <laughs> There's definitely some skill involved within esports. But she says the dedication, focus, and skills of traditional athletes versus gamers are night and day. On a physical level, having to perform whatever sport it is, you can't really create that sitting down watching a screen. One. Athlete Natalie Anderson spends several hours a week in the gym. This is what helps me continue to compete at the level that I enjoy doing. Four. She argues the stakes are simply higher for traditional athletes. Sort of run out of steam towards the end of the map. Versus gamers. I can certainly appreciate the skill it takes to master any, but I don't think that they're necessarily comparable in that you're not putting your body on the line. There's just that physical component of if I come and I'm not focused, you know, I could have a serious accident or get hurt. Regardless, esports is certainly a game changer and dispelling stereotypes. 300 pound guys in his mother's basement or something like that, totally wrong. So. <laughs> DU Computer Science Chair Scott Luteniger says the intellectual abilities of eSports athletes are undeniable. What's called telescopic probing, if I do this and then I do this and I do that next, just like chess, multiple stages of what you are going to do. But unlike chess, you need to do it in a team. For the professionals like Kate Culpepper. I go by Tiny Kate. It is about changing the culture. Oh no, there's a guy down there. She's breaking barriers. First, as a woman in esports. I think there's definitely space in this esports kind of sphere, and we just have to make room for ourselves. And second, beyond competing. She's not leaving me any loot. She's making a name for herself as an esports. You have to practice. Event organizer. Big amateur open tournaments. Tournaments that pay out huge purses, like golf. Prize pools ranging from 500 to $10,000. Really? Uh, yeah, and it's only going to get higher. Just like every sport, you have the elite. How you place, the more you earn. Dude.
food. The doors here are also open to the casual gamer. You should. Ten dollars to play for four hours. A sport, a social club, whatever you may call it, becoming more mainstream and popular by the minute. We're not physically exerting ourselves. That's pretty obvious. But I would say we have the, the competitiveness. It's really a good way to make friends. I knew it. Our fun is on a computer. What's so wrong with that? I can see. Russell Haythorn, Denver 7. Wow. All right. If we missed your perspective in this 360 report, we always want to hear from you. 360 at the DenverChannel.com. We're weighing right now on the Denver 7 Facebook and Twitter pages.